Good morning, beautiful. Welcome to a brand new day of life. Happy Wednesday, everybody. It is time to wake up and put those feet on the floor and get busy living this day. I hope you have something fantastic planned. This morning, we're going to learn from Peter. Peter was the first of the 12 disciples to be chosen by Jesus. And he's my favorite because he kind of reminds me of me. Peter is characterized as strong-willed and courageous, but at times he could be quick to speak and impulsive. Anyone else here ever gotten themselves in trouble because they speak before they really think about what's about to come out of their mouth? Have you ever wanted to somehow just suck your own words right back up, rewind time by a few minutes, and think again before you speak? Oh, impulsiveness at its worst. That was Peter, quick to show up, quick to volunteer, eager to get to work and make things happen, and sure to make a mess. But Jesus loved him. And as we dig into the most infamous part of Peter's story, let us all remember this. Jesus chose imperfect Peter, hand-selected him as one of his 12 disciples, his best friends who he would live with and personally teach. He knew all the great and noble things about Peter, and he also knew his greatest faults when he chose him. Yet he chose him anyway. So here we are at the end of Jesus' ministry. Peter and the other disciples have witnessed Jesus do the impossible. They knew he was truly the Son of God. He was the Savior of the world. They had no doubt of that. They saw him raise the dead. They witnessed him heal a blind man and a crippled man. They were there when he turned water into wine and cast out demons into a herd of pigs. And now Jesus had gathered these men whom he would leave his ministry to and prepared them for what was to come. And let's put it this way. Things were about to get bad real bad. And Peter, the quick one to speak, the impulsive one, quickly stands up next to Jesus and says, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. And in Luke twenty-two thirty-four, it says, but Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. Can you imagine being Peter in this moment, called out in front of everyone? I've always read the scripture and the story that follows of Peter, in fact, straight up denying Jesus three times that night. And I've thought, ah, shame on you, Peter. How could you do that? Why would you lie? You were warned, and yet you did it. It was always just a story to me of the downfall and shame of Peter. Never was it anything applied to my life. Over the past week, God has really spoken to me about Peter's denial of Jesus. I've always believed that I would never deny Jesus. If a gun was pointed to my head and I was told if I confessed the name of Jesus, they would pull the trigger, I would still claim Jesus. So quite honestly, it's been easy to put myself on some sort of holier-than-thou pedestal saying, I would never do what Peter did. But what if we have denied Jesus? What if I have denied him and, and you have too? How, you ask? I have a few thoughts on that. First, when we take credit for our talent, our job well done, our own success, thinking so well of ourselves, aren't we denying God? I mean, he is the one who gave you the talent. He is the one who made it even possible for you to do what you do. Anything that is good about you is simply the result of a loving creator who has shown his favor. So in essence, when we are puffed up taking the credit, we are denying the one who is truly worthy of the credit. Now, God isn't interested in our cheap 
words. This isn't about responding to every compliment with a canned response of, oh, to God be the glory. (laughs) This isn't about your response at all, not to others. It's about your heart. Do you know everything good in your life, every talent you have, every success you enjoy is a direct result of God's blessing on you? Do you know it? Do you live like it? Do you think like it? It's not about our canned responses. It's what's inside of us. Let us stop denying God of the credit he deserves. Acknowledge his gifts, his blessings, his undeniable favor upon your life every moment of your day with sheer awareness. I mean, this is about just looking around at our life and saying, "Mm, yeah, okay, my paycheck bought that, but God's the one who gave me the ability to do this job. He gave me this opportunity to earn this money. Ultimately, credit goes to him. A sheer awareness. Yeah, it's really not you. It really is him. I also believe we deny Jesus by forgetting who we are in him. When we cut ourselves down, belittle ourselves, play little in our own lives, we are denying who Christ died for. We are denying who he has made us to be. Don't you know your lack of confidence and low self-esteem burdens your creator and your savior? You were made to be more. Stop denying your true identity in Christ. So today, let's give credit where credit is due. (laughs) Quite simply, yeah, is God. Is God's favor, God's blessings upon your life. Let's give him the credit for it. And again, it's not about canned responses. It's about the heart. It's about living in an awareness. Uh, That's God, God, God. Uh, Yep, yep, that was God. Mm -hmm, That's God right there written all over it. And let's remember where our confidence should come from. Stop denying Jesus by forgetting who we really are in him. No more cutting ourselves down, no more belittling ourselves, no more playing little in our own lives. No, 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 no. You are the girl that Jesus died for. Live as he has made you to be. Yeah, that girl. I would be honored to pray with you this morning. Why don't you join me? God, good morning. God, how we thank you for this new day of life. God, thank you for waking us up this morning and giving us strength to get up and stand up. And God, we just take a moment to look around our life with a full awareness that it's all a result of you. Forgive us for where we have been taking credit, for where we have been thinking, oh, I am so good. I did this and I'm responsible for that. God, help us to find the balance of taking responsibility for our lives, of taking action, but remembering to give you credit. It is because of you that we are alive at this moment. Our talents, our gifts, anything good about us is simply a result of you. Forgive us for how we've gotten us out of line, for where we've taken credit and in essence denied you. God, we give you credit today. We acknowledge you today. Help us to stay in that awareness throughout this day. And God, help us to live up to our potential. Help us to remember who we are in you, that we won't deny that truth anymore. We won't deny that we are capable, we are worthy, we are more than enough because of you. Help us to remember that today. God, I lift up each and every one listening at this moment, and I just ask, God, that you would meet them right where they're at. They have some real needs. God, there's some marriages that are in deep trouble. There's some health that is threatened. There are people who are worried and scared and stressed and unsure how they're going to make it through the rest of this month. And, God, I just call upon you 
to just be with them and do what only you can do. Would you strengthen them today? Would you bless them? Would you show them the next step and give them the courage to take it? I pray your blessings, your protection, your provision, your undeniable favor on each one and their entire family. Thank you again for this day of life. We're excited to live it, live it well, and give you credit. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, my friends, I hope you are about to enjoy a fabulous Wednesday. I bet God has something awesome lined up for today. I love you wildly. Bye-bye.